Well, you asked what offshore racing outreach looks like. This is what it looks like. 56 foot good trouble. Molokai Channel, Diamond Head, Oahu. Skippered by Marie Rogers. Marie is co-founder of Offshore Racing Outreach, ORO. They rebuilt and renamed Good Trouble in honor of civil rights and longtime U.S. Congressional Leader John Lewis. The ORO mission is to make uh, Grand Prix sailing accessible to people who've traditionally been excluded from the sport. ORO enlisted J World of San Diego to coach and manage the boat's transpac race, and in turn, my friend Captain Paul brought me aboard as a coach and the ship's engineer. I was honored to join this diverse crew. I went to LA six days before the race to help finish the boat's refit, go to the kickoff party in the USS Iowa, be a fanboy of the big racing trimarans, got to meet Roy Disney's Piwacket crew, and of course check out all the exciting new carbon race boats down there. And as an omen of all the work ahead, I of course got sprayed by a skunk outside the marina restaurant late the night before the race. Typical. Okay, good people. Welcome to the deck of Good Trouble. She's an Alan Andrews 56 racer cruiser sled built for going to Hawaii, and that is what we're doing. We are motoring towards the start line of the 2023 Transpac LA to Honolulu. Our race has one turning mark. It's the west end of Catalina. Go around Catalina this afternoon and head to Hawaii. Our starting group's got, looks like, about 20 boats in it. We're starting on the middle day, Thursday. There are three starts, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Raven's Wings first time sailing to Hawaii, so I'm so excited. Our skipper is Pablo. I've known him for a long time. He used to have a F-31, Sally Lightfoot, and a number of other cool boats we've sailed on. And he invited me to Mr. Watch Captain, so I'm so pumped. We got two big carbon poles here. We got five spinnakers downstairs. This boat has been fully refurbished since 1992. She's been worked on for a year and a half. Every system has either come out of the boat or is new install. Beautiful day, June 29, 2023. We're headed for Point Foreman, start line area. Looks like actually there's the committee boat right there. And we start in an hour. First guns at 12.55, it's 11.57. Yeah, check out Racer Chaser here. That's her mama holding up the camera, <laughs> waving her baby off. Oh, I'm tied in, all right. Our fleet's gathering here. 55 minutes to start. Whoop, whoop. 7 p.m. on day one. I didn't film the start because it was pretty hectic for me anyway. We had a good start. Got over the line in the front of the pack. Catalina's behind us. About seven o'clock in the evenings, so we've been out six hours. And we're on the open ocean now. We got competitors, I got two boats down there, two boats over there. Over my right shoulder, we've got our J World sister ships, Kazan and Hula Girl. We're all just trying to figure out what's the right route to get over the high pressure system ridge out here. So we're on our number three jib and full main. And we've got our polar chart right here. It says that in this 10 knots of wind, this boat going upwind is best when you keep the true end at 42 degrees. So when we come down a little bit, there's 40, 41, and we're doing 8.1 knots. And sure enough, the polar chart is dead on. Just going for boat speed right now. 2021 on day two. The sun never came out today. Ariana's driving the Polar Expedition bus here. Looks like because we're freezing cold. Okay. Everything I have is now on the body here. Including the ski gloves. But cracked off. Second instrument is 98 degrees true. Boat's doing 9.2 knots. We're on the uh, navigator's heading of 247, 245 to Hawaii. 60 degrees apparent. Under the second instrument, it says 15 knots of true wind. That's oscillating 15 to 20. When it's 20, we use the main down. 15 to power it up. We've been able to hold 
between 9 and 10 knots of boat speed all afternoon. But if it goes lighter, the boss is going to poke his head out and make us put up the blast reacher. I don't really want to do a sail change in the dark. The sea is kind of confused this afternoon. Some of the driving was hard. It's an old school boat. There's no driving platforms. She's having to really lean over. It's super uncomfortable after about 40 minutes. We had a conversation earlier about ergonomics in these race boats and it seems like through the 70s, 80s, and 90s nobody cared about what made sense for the drivers and trimmers and it's hard on the bodies. Today's boats, you're more comfortable actually handling the boat and I think the boat gets better performance that way. But 56 feet of waterline is definitely paying off today. Weather nicely. I think it's day three. Second container ship across our bow of the last couple hours. That one's going. The sky's still gray. We're still all bundled up. See everybody? Like polar explorers out here. Cracked open the pickles. Brand new Hike Clue Reacher. First time it's been in the sky, it's pulling hard and looking good. Marie's happy. Pickles! Pickles at sea. These pickles taste so good on the ocean. Oh yeah, now we know who it is. Marie's cup. This is my new buddy Yosh on the wheel. He's kind of a badass because her brain is all over this boat. She has made herself boat living captain, certainly. She is ahead of everybody on the water maker. Oh, she set the cleaning schedule. Without Yosh, we'd have dirty bathrooms. Not that Yosh is doing the cleaning, but Yosh took it upon herself to make a uh, cleaning watch schedule. This is good. And she's leaving a clean, straight wake behind the boat. She is sailing efficiently at 255 degrees. I bet if we turn around, we'll find nine knots. Oh no, 10.2. Ha, that's Yosh. This is my bunk. I share it, hot bunk it with the other coach, Marie. Basically, one of us is on deck all the time, so Earth is available for the off watch person. So, the sleeping bag we use as a quilt. We each have our own sleeping bag liner, like a little tiny sleeping bag. So I bring my bag down, a pillow, and this thing is our, um, basically our blanket that we trade back and forth. Four peak of the boat, keep it light, fenders, a little bit of freeze dried food, some fallies hanging. There's a watertight compartment up front, rope locker, and the forward head compartment, and the emergency ladder. Pretty mellow right now. We're broad reaching at 10 knots. But the sea state's pretty easy. It's uh, uh, 3.30 in the afternoon on day three. And we were going upwind yesterday, you know, the mast right here. As we jumped off waves, the boat lands pretty much right about here. So it just sounded like a freight train in here. It's tough sleeping. And then through the big hatch, I guess you can see the rig the whole time. So you can see our Last reacher and full main. Everything turned out just nice. And that telltale just showing you, the wind's coming from about 90 degrees, so we're on V uh, reaching. Hey, good people. It's the Sunday afternoon update from the bow of good trouble. Yesterday evening, where the boat gremlins appeared, ah, I spent my off watch three hours, nine to midnight time? Yeah. With engine fueling issues. And the refit was done. Somebody didn't label the directions on the three position fuel tank lever switch, so. 
Everybody thought that the boat was running on her main tank, but I looked at the gas gauges late in the day and realized, oh no, we were, the main tank was still full and the day tank, the small tank, which we had deemed our emergency tank, was already gone from three quarters down to half. So we switched the fuel service over and we thought we were switching tanks, but it turns out we were actually shutting off fuel supply to the engine. So we spent hours diagnosing fuel flow problems. So her engine's running again. And we're chasing leaks because she is a 30 year old warhorse, decorated better in race boat. Some of these stanchion bases are a little bit leaky. That led to some water at the electronics area, etc. But she sails great. We powered up and going. You can see we've put our big J1 back up. And you guys can't quite see the masthead fly, but our apparent wind is only is like at about 50 degrees. So we don't have much wind out here. We're struggling with seven or eight knots, but we got the boat going eight and a half. Busting through 75 miles of pretty light wind. And we're thinking Sunday by Tuesday morning, spinnakers will be up and we'll be up in 15 knots of wind and having the classic Hawaii race conditions. Haven't seen the sun yet. Here we are, we left Thursday in the sunshine, but it's been cloudy Friday, Saturday, and Sunday here. Sandy's driving. I turned the dark glasses back there. She's a good driver. I know, you guys think I'm crazy. I've got a beautiful flat level trimaran sitting in Mexico. Here I am, leaning over 25 degrees. It's hard on the body. All right, thank you for showing up. Uh, first off, I want to say how stoked I am that A, we are competitive. As a new team and a new boat, we are competitive. I'm really impressed. And B, and no less important, is we are safe. So far, knock on wood, so good. It's Tuesday, 4th of July, 9.30 in the morning. We're just finally going to set a spinnaker in Transpac. We started on Thursday. We're like 800 miles down the track. It's ridiculous how late it is. But we've got our true wind angle at 132. It's been lower than that, meaning too high to do spinnaker work for quite some time. Some of you are saying, why is lower than 122 high? It's because this boat's polar. So it's built for sailing or spinnakers at 140 and above. down going up Bang. winch winch Got it. you're good fans work ready for reacher down yeah. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready with you on higher. Hey, Wes. Hold. Hold
her bag is? Back there. Okay. Gonna bag it and tag it. Okay, it's our first hour with our shoot up. This is A3. Pablo's been driving. I took a bit. Now we got Sandy on. Sandy has been hungry for the spinnaker for four days. She's been like a little, little child. When do I get my spinnaker? She was like waiting for Christmas. Christmas day, Christmas, this is Sandy's Christmas morning is what this is. Open the spinnaker bag today. <laughs> she unwrapped her chute. Rhonda's learning what grinder really means. It's not about coffee. Trim. It's a wave on. Fifteen knots predicted. Yeah. Our first Zoom meeting for this team. The Capitano here said, "I just can't wait to get back out to the Pacific to my big blue friends rolling by." And everybody stopped for a second and thought about that. Yeah, that's crazy. the way to do it, Roddy. Good knees can take it. Keep on that. Keep that foot on that left block so you don't slide, and then you can get your. You get your center of gravity over top of the wind exactly. and use your core instead of trying to do it with just your arms. Okay. You'll burn yourself out trying to do it that way. Okay. Got it. Hold, 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 hold. Spinnaker change. Bring in the pole down. Number one. Uh, oh, we need to coordinate the pole moving so the three of you work together. Okay. So take another wrap and not talk enough. Open the clutch. The front end of the spinner pole coming down off the other topping lift drop. Ariana's got to be able to reach it. She's got the uh, Marlin spike in her right hand. Can you reach it okay, Ari? Okay, pull on the sheet. Go, yo! Stand by Halyard. On a witch. On a witch. Yeah, that first spinnaker peel was pretty sloppy, but we got a lot better over the next couple of days. Good trouble rocking in 15 knots of breeze, 11 knots of boat speed. And the weather finally got nice for the halfway party. Yosh made deviled eggs today. Oh, see. Ooh, la, la. Also, we made a sardine tapenade with olives, carrots, tomatoes, <laughs> Michelle's black seed. I mean, my, uh, we're finally seeing the blue water. All right, should we do our god offering? Let's what? see your dress. Hey, sorry, yes, it's a jumpsuit. Jumpsuit, all right. Bring us back one piece. Well, I'm going to add some additional help from all of our Kahuna. That's our ancestors. Okay, this is our family. Our family is the spiritual force. Your strength that will get us there in one piece.
supporting this effort. You guys have been patient. You've been great, helpful, and um, it makes the whole trip worthwhile. Woo! Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's going fast. Yeah, she's got your DNA now. Oh, by the way, we just popped 12s again. Woo! Thank you, Pablo. With a champagne in his hand, surfing good trouble. That's my man. Oh. Oh. I did learn his trick for now. <laughs> Let's see your spinnaker takedown. <laughs> I gotta ask James and Rhonda what day this even is. We think it's Wednesday. It's the end of a full week of the Transpac. We're looking at five more days. So they're saying this is a pretty light wind year. Oops. It's coming down. Going nine knots. That's what we're averaging. Our A2 kite's up. Full main. We're gonna passively drive tonight on the spinnaker. She's pleated off over here on the primary. The big guys over here on this one. Jack lines up for the sprit. Over with that pole. Got dropped accidentally, and the inboard end came down and smashed me in the head doing a sail change. So I've spent the day kind of on the couch chilling. We're feeling okay now. Looks like tonight we might have some rain squalls to work with. We know the Hula Girl is 21 or two miles dead ahead of us. We're on the same track. We're chasing down Hula. And I looked at the tracker. San Francisco, Pride of San Francisco, Orion, Trimoran. It's on their fourth day. And they will hit Hawaii tomorrow, probably in the evening, which is amazing. They did a 500 and something mile day yesterday. Ready to open the jaw? No. Are we ready to open the jaw? Are we ready to open the jaw? Ready to open the jaw? Yeah. Ready. Jaws open. Jaws open. When do you need the main in? Let's start the main in. the runners. Runners free. Good job, Colin. Okay, get your handle out, ready for ease. You need five to the chopper. Coming. Sheets good. Okay, James is on both sheets. Can Marie Let's blow? Blow, Marie. Blow it. Pull, James. Biggies. Okay. Jive is complete. We're totally under control. Take it slow. We have all day to do the rest. Okay, we're made up here. Okay, we're going to do our transfer back to the pole now. That's going to be ease tack line. And on guys. Come back. We're going to do the same angle as before. So pull comes back another two feet. Okay, good. Thank good you. Job, good, good. good job, folks. Really good job. Woo! <laughs>
bowl never even so much as kiss on towards it. The twing needs to move over. Blast feature is going away, right? No more blast feature. Well, it doesn't even fit in the bag right now. She had, no, they have to roll it a little better. It needs to at least fit in the bag. When we get bored again, we're gonna like stick them on. No, I'm gonna rewire the alternator before I do that. Okay, let's uh, let's trim this main out. I think we want to sheet in and travel out. It's not do. Throughout the 11 day race, we did execute J World's model of individual skills coaching. I'm really proud of that. And there was a lot of great peer to peer information being passed along the crew. So I think everybody had a good learning trip. It's Thursday evening. We started a week ago last Thursday. We're 800 miles off Hawaii. Water is so blue. Look at that. So beautiful. I'm just finishing up an afternoon of boat minor upgrades. I think my buddies at J-World put me on this job because they knew that this 30-year-old boat was gonna just need some loving along the trip. So I'm pointing my toe right there. Another one on the other side. We're getting leaking into the back end of the boat because the pipes inside there, the glass is split a little bit and they're capped off. So I think they're just old um, bilge pipe exits that are no longer in service. So I'm probably gonna bung these tomorrow. See if we can keep it dry in the back. One cool thing we did on this boat prior to departure was took the aft cabin bulkhead that had many apertures through it and we sealed everything off and created a eight dog latching system on the access hatch. So we got, in effect, a nearly 100% watertight steering area section of the boat. So if we took damage to the rudder shaft and had some hull breach back there, we're keeping that water out of the central boat. We also have watertight crash bulkhead in the front of the boat and a door that we can seal off as the next level in. So we think that this boat can be kept afloat with very large flotation areas in the front and back, kind of 12 feet, 12 to 15 feet each, a 56 foot boat. We had a really close crossing last night and the boat was AIS silent. We didn't talk on the radio. We had right away sailing wise. They had right away if it was just general marine traffic because I saw their red lights. But once I realized that was a sailboat, we're all out here racing, we went into racing rules. Just my decision on watch. If we got the four hour delayed yellow brick tracker, we can see that that's uh, the boat that's currently first place in our division. And they had to duck us. So a week into the race, we're at least distance to finish. We were ahead of them because we owe them time. But it was just awesome to be boat for boat out there in the same place a week into the race. The other fun thing for us is the three J-World boats. This one, you know, Good Trouble is being co-managed by J-World for this race. And Hula Girl and Kazan, J-World's race horses. We are all in a line. I think we're like in something like 24th, 25th, 26th place. All three of us in the overall ORR endings. But Wayne's three J-World boats are all neck and neck. So we got a little internal brotherhood competition going. Eight thirty California time, Thursday night. Fourteen knots of wind. Almost enough to get this big boat up on top. There we go. There's a the surf. Yeah, ride it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that smile. Oh, it's about a half hour later. Look at that sweet little lip on the spinnaker. That's James. He calls it the lip of Elvis. And there's the man. Driving this boat right down the edge of his curl. And he's competing with his friend Yoshir. She's on it too. It's 
been a great trip for learning good driving. And another hour later or so. 15, 16 knots breeze, both speed over 10. We have very well funded campaigns directly behind us and directly in front of us. We're staying up here with the pro navigators. My competitors are down to our left. One night this squid randomly sacrificed itself on the galley port light. I named him Anton. Some of you know why. Sunset under the A4 on day nine. We are about uh, 500 miles out of Hawaii now. Today we rigged up our small blast reacher. It's on the furler right now. The furler was not installed. We brought it with us from home. Didn't have complete instruction set, so we were Starlink. Got the uh, full instruction manual downloaded. Did take us a little while to get it all sorted out. I was driving while Paul and the team installed. We did manage to keep the bow crew just barely dry. Didn't teabag anybody. And then the irony is uh, we couldn't get the, um, the top swivel up off the bottom here. So I had to go back, look at the manual, make sure it wasn't screwed down. I came out with a mallet, Sandy was on the halyard. We lifted it, popped it out. And Paul went back and drove during that. And of course, the one time somebody got teabagged, it was me. The boss got me all wet. Here's our evening team. Got Colin, Yosh, and Marie. Yosh has learned how to be an ocean driver. <laughs> Colin did a great job today too. It's a good shot of what the sea is doing to us. Yosh is having the stern of the boat kicked around by these waves. And I was coaching her up on how to drive the boat straight in these seas and she has picked it up super well and I'm watching our wake right now and she's driving a nice straight line we've been having fun doing things like pick that cloud on the horizon another one in front of us and just imagine the boat working the line between two clouds we've got Paul's steering tips on driving towards your low foot and 50 other things we've been talking about got ourselves a little bit of a bummer we did blow up one shoot our big A2. Uh, we were doing a shift change last night. I was coming on at 3 a.m. with two new crew, you know, like three of us being new. So a squall was coming through. And in retrospect, we probably should have held the existing three hour crew on for another 15 minutes. So right as we were changing drivers, the boat shot down a wave, plowed in the one in front, slowed us down. We dropped the you know, definitely a few knots of boat speed and ended up with a spinnaker wrap. And we did a pretty amazing attempt, multiple jibes to get the spinnaker to unwind itself. You know, you got to jibe over and get on the other side to spin the vortex the other way up top and try to spin that chute, which uh, we had some decent success with. But in the end, there was a big knuckle knot. Another hour or so ended up destroying itself. And we very, we had really good crew work to bring it down. It was just held on by two tapes. We managed to get it all down cleanly into the hatch and not sky our halyard. So in the end, strong teamwork, dodged a bullet, if you so to speak. You don't want to have someone having to go up the rig. Certainly don't want half or a quarter of a sail flapping and flying up there in the wind like we see in the bad videos. So this team pulled it all together. Good captain instructing us carefully on procedures. So all part of the learning. Hey, this is big boat racing. We're not the only folks to blow a kite up on in Transpac. So we've got our uh, little more moderate A4 up. Super easy to sail, deep downwind. And this will get us probably the last shoot on in because the forecast is for building wind. All right, good people, time to go in and get cleaned up with a shave. See ya. Yeah, I just got woken up by a night squall here. The rain came in my window. I felt the boat diving down waves and plowing. Oh yeah, there's the big black cloud. You guys can't see it, but it's super heavy. I'm walking from the forward stateroom aft. 
Alright, had the weight had gone up over 20. Now it's back down to 16, now it's doing 10. That's all calmed down. We're done, good. Back to sleep. Later that night, the crew asked me to drive because a squall was bearing down on us and they were going to go down below to close the hatches. I turned down wind just as the rain started, but we think two cells collided right over us because the wind jumped way up in the 30s. We saw it on the meter. The boat rounded up hard. We got pinned down with the boom dragging in the water, throwing phosphorescence. I couldn't get the wheel back to center. Pablo was able to get out of his berth and come up and help straighten the boat out. Um, all four of us on deck were clipped in, so everybody was safe, but we did throw some people out of their bunks, and that wasn't too fun. That was our only bad knockdown of the trip. Paul, so Paul, when do you think we're going to finish this race? Well, we're going to finish it whenever Sharon Green, the professional photographer, would like us to finish it. Are we timing our arrival for helicopter, yeah. on the helicopter schedule? Yeah. Helicopter, diamond head, what time would you like we're doing trans back our way. Amazing. Okay, so really, we were fifth in division at that point. We couldn't change our standings, and the financial backers were willing to take pictures from the helicopter if we could just get there in daylight. So it was game on, let's go fast. Lando, it's Molokai. <laughs> we're here. We're 48 miles from the finish line. It is 3.15 on Monday. We're hustling. Got uh, A4 spin and a reacher up and full main. Doing about 10 knots right now. 48 miles. If we get there into the channel by 7.45, we get helicopter photos. That's our new goal. I'm happy as hell. We'll get a shave and a cleanup. We're polishing our bright work. We've got good trouble. All presentable. We're gonna park her at the uh, what, Alleyway Yacht Club, I think. Nice afternoon spinnaker run. So yesterday, Maria signed us a writing piece. She wanted us to journal from our child selves. I've been too darn busy. I'm just gonna speak it. I have wanted to get to Hawaii by boat, maybe since I was a little kid. And it's happening today. So the inner child just says, keep dreaming and keep working so that the dreams and the work intersect. Well, yeah, I was that kind of kid who would talk that way. As big and powerful and scary as the ocean is, can also be a magical place. And I think that the kid knows that too, or has always known that. This one's for Rick Hallway. I came on deck, Sandy here was driving, and we were wing on wing, just with the reacher and the main, and it makes the boat feel very different because the balance moves from side to side like a pendulum as the boat rolls in the waves. So the rudder feel is really different. I had just come off of like two hours of computer work with some pretty stressful conversations about work that needs to happen to the boat in Hawaii before her quick turn for her delivery home. And I had sort of tunnel vision from the computer, came up on deck, Sandy goes, Greg, Greg, I need you to drive. This isn't working. Please drive, please drive. So I ran to the wheel. There is no light. The moon hadn't come up yet. There were a lot of disturbed waves on the sea, and the sky was just so monotone. There was an overcast layer ahead, had no stars to work with, no clouds to steer by. And I developed like this tunnel vision in a few seconds. And thank God we had this super stable rig. <laughs> Actually, I think maybe even spun the boat in a circle. Hopefully not that bad. They woke the skipper up. Paul's like, who's driving? And they said, Greg, and he goes, ugh. I said, you okay? You got this? And I got my vision squared away. and. But it was a kind of a rough couple of minutes. Reminded me of uh, when Mr. Hall Captain Hallway took me out to the Farallons on a black night. We took the darkest night we could to practice single-handing at night. And both he and I got tired and disoriented, thinking that the lighthouse on Farallons was a moving ship and we didn't trust the compass. We were both kind of delirious. And that was a great learning about um, taking care of your body so that your mind doesn't get wacky 
on dark nights. Oh, look at the boat surfing now. What a great surf. Go Yosh. Nice. So 20 years later to have it happen for a few minutes was a good reminder, good wake up call. And I think it surprised the crew too. They're like, uh-oh, even our watch captain is getting funky. Wind picked up off Molokai and I got the boat up to 17 knots. It was fun. <laughs> well, you basically already sailed the boat to Hawaii. Minus a short swim. Yeah. Good trouble. Final approach. Okay, good people, Molokai Channel. We got 19, 20 knots of breeze. We're powered up. Let's get you some surfing here. We'll save the best driver on the boat for last. Here he goes. Make it happen, Pablo. Send it. 13, 8, 14. Let's get touched 15. This is why we raced to Hawaii. able to heat it up. It's going to get some soak down. Look at this old boat go. 14 knots. There's 15. There's 16. 16, 8. Did somebody hit the send button? <laughs> There we go. There's one. There's a big one. Look at this girl go. Oh, epic. 17 knot surf. And he actually got her up to 20 knots during this run, just after I turned the camera off. Pablo calls these things his big blue Pacific friends. Only uh, back there by the shoal, we think they were just wedding crashers. They weren't really his friends. They were mean. He said, did you invite them? No, did you? Here we go, here's a big one. But it was bittersweet as the wind and the boat speeds decrease as we make contact with Oahu. <laughs> She's okay, it's a magic school bus. <laughs> 19 knots of breeze, she's got 13 knots on the speedometer. You having fun, boss? Yeah. What are you grateful for, Marie? Uh, I'm grateful for so amazing. Boat full of people. Boat full of good people. Really cool. Well, oh, hold on. Let's stop talking and start racing. Look at these waves. Marie's got her hands full tonight. Okay, the sunset rip across Molokai Channel's over. We're, all, we're right on Oahu now. It's gonna get too dark to film. We are 7.3 miles from the finish line. Huh. James on the wheel. Everybody finally starting to mellow out. There's a lot of hooting and hollering as we were surfing up in the upper teens. Crew's doing great work there. We just came down a wave at 16 slowed to 11. They ground that spin and then threw it right back out as soon as the wind caught it. We're coming to the finish. Marie's driving us across. We're awaiting radio contact. Last tail of the boat. Oh, Thank you, my God. Yep. <laughs> nice, easy entry. Green uh, vessel, good trouble. This is Transbox Diamond Head. Seven watch, over. <laughs> <laughs> Transpac, good 
trouble. Thank you, good trouble over to 6-8. Oh my gosh, good trouble, this is for us! <laughs> yeah! Oh, that is amazing. Make a circle. Look at my 70 miles of riding. Not expecting that. Come on, oh, there's Orion, the bear, big winner. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to Hawaii. Let's see if our horns in there. Let's see if our blast our horn at him. Flower Lays. Ari's parents are allowed down here. It was a pleasure. She brought us home. This is, exactly. this is Ari's mom. She gave us flowers for bringing her daughter safe. She had a great trip. Finally, I offer a huge thank you to the crew of Yosh, Rhonda, Ariana, Sandy, James, and Colin. It was so fun to travel with you guys. To Marie and Paul, we fulfilled the bold mission with style. And a big thanks to the ORO board members for each and all of your commitments to our safe passage. ORO is a good idea and you've got a great boat to work with. Thanks again, folks. <laughs>